All right, everybody, get ready for this one because we're really diving into the deep end today. We're talking UFOs, specifically those Hudson Valley sightings. You know, those crazy stories from back in the 80s and 90s. Thousands of people saying they saw the same things in the sky and it all went down in this one little corner of the world. Makes you wonder, right? Oh, it's definitely one for the books, that's for sure. When you look back at all those Hudson Valley sightings, it's hard not to get sucked in. The sheer number of reports is mind-boggling, and the fact that so many people describe seeing the exact same thing, well, it really makes you stop and think. We're talking the 1980s and 90s in the Hudson Valley up in New York, and it wasn't just a flash in the pan, you know? This thing went on for years. Okay, so paint the picture for us. It's the early 80s, you're hanging out in the Hudson Valley as the sun goes down. What were people seeing in those first reports? What tips everyone off that something strange was going on? Okay, so picture this. It's a night, you're outside, and suddenly there it is, this huge triangular thing just hanging in the sky. And the really freaky part, dead silent. No engine noise, no nothing. Just this massive silent triangle with these weird pulsating lights, like something out of Close Encounters. And it wasn't just one or two people who saw it. The stories just kept coming, and they were all pretty much identical. Silent triangular. Yeah, you're right. We're not talking about your average airplane here. So with all that going on, no wonder people got hooked. But it seems like things really blew up in the late 80s and early 90s. Hundreds of reports were pouring in. People were driving from all over, just hoping to catch a glimpse. What changed? Why the sudden surge in uh, UFO tourism? Well, I think it was a perfect storm, really. It's like the Hudson Valley sightings hit some kind of critical mass. Suddenly, everyone was talking about it, and the media. Forget about it. They went wild. News stories, documentaries, even the late-night guys were cracking jokes about it. Yeah, you couldn't escape it. And back then, with the 24-7 news cycle just getting started, well, let's just say it definitely fanned the flames. But don't you think there was something about those specific details, something about these UFOs that really captured people's imagination. Oh, absolutely. It wasn't just lights in the sky like people had seen before. These things had a look, and it was the same look every time. And those details, man, they were tough to explain away as weather balloons or airplanes made you wonder if just maybe people were seeing something real, something truly out there. Okay, so let's break it down. We keep hearing about this triangular shape, and it sounds like we're not talking about something small, right? These were massive. I'm talking enormous. Some people said those UFOs were as big as a football field. Yeah. Can you imagine looking up and seeing something that size just hovering there? Now that would definitely make you do a double take. And those lights, they weren't just your run of the mill lights in the sky, right? People kept mentioning these pulsing, color changing lights. Was there any rhyme or reason to them or was it more of a free for all? Well, that's the thing. People described all sorts of colors, but the one constant was that they were bright, they were strange, and they sure didn't look like anything you'd normally see on an airplane, that's for sure. We're not talking Christmas lights strung across the sky here. This was something else entirely. It was different, kind of eerie, actually. Yeah, definitely not your average light show. Yeah. And it wasn't just the lights that were strange, Yeah. right? People described these UFOs moving in ways that just defied explanation. It's true. They didn't really zip around like you'd expect from a spaceship in the movies. A lot of the reports talked about these objects just kind of hovering in place, almost like they were studying the landscape or something. They were checking things out down here. Spooky. Yeah, and then every once in a while they'd just, well, you know, disappear. Like, poof, gone. Now, that's what I call a disappearing act. It's one thing to see a weird light in the sky, but to have it vanish right before your eyes. And look, we're not talking about some vague rumors here, right? Uh -huh. These stories were coming from all sorts of people, teachers, cops, even pilots, people you wouldn't expect to make up stories about UFOs. Are there any specific accounts from that time that really stuck with you? That's the thing about the Hudson Valley sightings. It's not like there was just one type of person who saw these things. I mean, we're talking Everyone from families driving home to, like you said, off-duty police officers, firefighters. It was like these UFOs just popped up in front of anyone and everyone. And that's what makes it so hard to dismiss, right? You can't just chalk it up to a bunch of bored teenagers making up stories. Exactly. It really makes you think twice. There's this one report that's always stuck with me. It was from a group of firefighters. They were hanging out by the Hudson River one night, just talking. And then all of a sudden, there it was, that triangular shape hovering right over the water. Man, that must have been something else. Those firefighters must have thought they were dreaming or something. Did they ever say how it made them feel, seeing something like that? They mostly talked about this feeling of awe, like time just stopped. They said it was beautiful, even a little bit terrifying, but mostly just 
unexplainable. That's what I'm talking about. It just makes mm-hmm. you wonder, you know. Imagine having an experience like that, seeing something that defies all logic and reason. It would probably change the way you look at the world, don't you think? I mean, it really makes you question everything you thought you knew. No doubt about it. Those kinds of experiences leave a mark. It's like your whole reality shifts just a little bit. Makes you think about all the things we don't understand, all the mysteries that are still out there. Speaking of mysteries, with so many people looking up at the sky back then, did anyone ever manage to snap a clear picture of these UFOs? You'd think with all those sightings, we'd have some undeniable proof by now, right? (laughs) <laughs> You'd think so, right? I mean, these days, everyone's walking around with a camera in their pocket, but back then, well, not so much. It's true, and you know there are pictures out there. You can find them if you look. Blurry shapes and grainy videos claiming to be the real deal. Yeah. But, you know, nothing that's ever been officially confirmed, at least. It's like the more you try to get a clear picture, the fuzzier it all becomes. Oh. But hey, at least people were trying, right? It wasn't just a free-for-all of wild theories. There were actual investigations into the Hudson Valley sightings, weren't there? Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, the authorities couldn't just ignore it, not with so many people involved. So, yeah, there were some serious investigations going on. We're talking government agencies, scientists, even those UFO research groups. They all wanted to know what was going on up there. So what did they find? Any explanation? Did anyone ever get to the bottom of it all? That's the thing, isn't it? It's like the million-dollar question. You know, some folks said it was probably secret military aircraft, you know, experimental stuff that the public wasn't supposed to see. But, well, nothing concrete ever panned out. No one ever came forward with proof. You know what I mean? So we're back to square one. Pretty much. I mean, you can't ignore all those eyewitness accounts, especially not when you have multiple people, credible witnesses, all saying they saw the same thing. So it's still a mystery, all those reports, all those investigations, and we still don't really know what was going on in the Hudson Valley back then. So where does that leave us? What's the legacy of all of this all these years later? You know, it's tempting to try and find that one definitive answer, to put those Hudson Valley sightings into a nice little box and label it solved or debunked. But maybe it's not about finding all the answers. Maybe it's about embracing the mystery, you know? It reminds us that there's still a lot we don't know about the world, about the universe. And that's kind of exciting, isn't it? Absolutely. It's that sense of wonder that, well, that acknowledgement that there's still so much out there that we haven't figured out yet. I think that's what keeps people coming back to these stories, even after all these years. It makes you want to keep looking up, doesn't it? (laughs) Keep your eyes on the sky. Well, on that note, I think we've just about reached the end of our deep dive into the Hudson Valley sightings. What's the one thing you'd want our listeners to take away from all of this? Hmm, that's a good one. I guess I'd say keep asking those questions. Keep looking up at the stars and wondering. Who knows? Maybe we're not alone. And maybe, just maybe, those Hudson Valley sightings were a little glimpse into something truly extraordinary. Well said. And hey, if you're out there listening and you were in the Hudson Valley back in the day, if you saw something, if you have a story to tell, we want to hear from you. Until then, thanks for joining us for this deep dive into the unknown. We'll see you next time.